Good morning, all of it. Good morning, this is Deacon Eric Bader coming to you from All the Baptist Church. Good morning, members. How you doing? Uh, one is just, uh, we'll open up like we used to do with prayer. Uh, gracious God, we're grateful again for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this morning and giving us the strength that we can get up and make it this morning. We pray, Lord, though, that this scripture, this text in reference that we're dealing with healing will heal our mind, our soul, and give us the strength that we can glorify you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Last week, uh, I hope you enjoyed the tens and eighteen that Deacon Alfred did for us. Um, like I said, it was something I think it will help you because it's practical ways of looking at things and it could also help us spiritually. So it gives us practical applications for our lives that we can tie, and tie spiritual truth to it to help us along in these times of struggles that we're going through. Because we're going through some difficult times and we need to understand though that we need to stay vigilant in our belief and in our trust in God. And so we need to understand those things. So look at those things, reach out and get information and use those because those are things that help keep you sound and keep you in a good relationship with God. Knowing what's going on, knowing what's happening because there's a lot of things that, like I said, are going on now. And I thought it was real practical to help us out with those. So now we're going on and we're looking at our lessons. For you to have Sunday School book, is is our is called the heal. Uh, I changed the name to Jesus heals and forgive because we'll see the importance of it. Because healing, having, the most important thing is the faith, but being able to heal and also forgive. Because we look at this is that we have to look at this. This is one thing we have to look at. We're all dealing with illness and infirmities in our bodies, our mind and our soul and afflicted everyone is today. But if we look at this, may those who have not yet found the physical healing continue seeking it in faith, believing that God does heal physical illness, yet he does not heal, heal in every situation. Whether God offer you healing to overcome your illness or strength to continue despite it, you have a witness the power of God in your life. Paul tells us God comforts us so that we can comfort others. So before I read the scripture, but we look at that, so let's understand that. Either way, we're going to be in good hands. Either way, we're going to be comfort. Either way, we're going to be successful. Either way, God is going to do what needs to be done. If he doesn't take the healing, he, he'll, he still gives you the comfort that you'll need. So we're looking at this lesson of Mark, the second chapter. And if we look at this, is that Jesus is doing some healing. If you go to Mark, the first chapter and the 34th verse, it tells us that of what Jesus has been doing before this time. And it says in the 34th of Mark, the first chapter, uh, 34th verse, he, then he healed many who were sick with various disease and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. That's his authority. That's his power. That's when we say, when we're talking about in our lessons that we're studying, we're talking about call. And this whole session, we're talking about call. Call is a summons, an issue by one authority, which is God. Especially, especially him to, to do, to perform a particular function or to occupy a particular position. So here we look at this is that Jesus is out call. He's fulfilling what this call to be done. And look in that first verse, he says, and again he enters into Capernaum after some days, and the noise in the house was there was noise in the house. And straight away many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born, born of four. And when they could not come nay unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they laid down the bed within the sick and the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there, but there are, were certain 
of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doeth this man that speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately when the Jesus perceived in his spirit that by, by the, that, that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sin are forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He said it to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, as much as that were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw this fashion. They never saw the things that God did. I mean, Jesus did. Jesus was assigned to do the things that he did, and as we read, he was doing healing. He was doing all acts of things that he was doing. And when we look at that, we say, we say faith, healing, and forgiveness. And so Jesus again comes back to Capernaum. He was there once before and the people first, but he comes back. And he comes back, and he comes back unto them to fulfill what he has to fulfill. He comes back to working on the healing as his ministry is to send a message, like I said, Healing, he did a lot of healing, as we read, and so he did healing. Healing had a certain purpose, certain purpose, and for a certain reason. And it was not always what we might think it is, and it always might not have been what the individual wanted. And sometimes it was what the individual wanted, but he did the healing. So when we look at this, is that what comes in, and we looked at this in the first verse, and again he entered. So he comes back and says, again he entered. And there's a lot of noise going on in the house. And straightway my there gathered him. And he says this, and as much there was no room to receive him, known as much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. That's very important, very significant. The preaching is what draws individuals. The preaching is what saves lives. He preached the word to them. And that's significant right there. Because before anything takes place, is that the word draws an individual to Jesus. It's the word. It's nothing else but the word. He they preach, he preached the word unto them. And they were saved. He preached the word. And the people drew to Jesus his presence, his word, his wisdom, his actions, his attitude, the grace of God rested upon him. As the Son of God, he, he nature, he knew, na his nature drew people as well. They desired to be close to him, to be in his presence, to listen to his words, to hear his voice. They wanted to see him, and they wanted to touch the lives of people. That's what draws individuals. That's what brings them to the Word of God. And he was, and and he was a living example of what he preached and taught. He was the living testimony of the word he preached and taught. He is the word of God indeed. That's what brings people. That's what people seek. You have to be an example, but you have to be the word of God. And the only way to do that is when I say being the word of God is studying the word of God and being indwelled with the Holy Spirit to allow you to act accordingly as Jesus did. Remember, Jesus came as God to be an example for humanity. Very simple, very simple. A moral life, righteous life, one of forgiving, one of patience, one of meekness. He came for that. He came so that everyone could, uh, could have eternal life. So he came for that. He came as an example that we see, and we have books in the Bible to help us understand that. And so when we get to verses three and four, I won't read them, but we'll look at that, is that as the man was being brought by four, his four friends, the four helpers are determined to get him there. So they were selfless in what they had to do because you look at it, you read in the scriptures, they couldn't get in the house uh, because Jesus was preaching. They couldn't get in the house. The house was, you know, back in Palestine, you got to look at this house. This house had one entryway, which was the front way, and maybe some windows on the side, maybe that was it. 
So it wasn't like the houses we look at now. It was very small house, calculated probably as a one bedroom home, something of that nature, very small, but you see this large crowd. So when these men went and couldn't able to get Jesus in, they knew that they could go to the roof the way the roof was designed, is that they could take it apart, and it actually had stairs that you could go up to the roof and you could take it apart. And so the men knew this, and eventually they would come back and repair it. They're not going to tear them back uh, and leave it away. So they knew that. But their determination was to get to him, to get to Jesus. That was the determination. Because of all the excitement of what he did, is that that was the determination. Is that your determination? Look at the excitement. Hear the word each morning. Hear the word and have the excitement to get there. I know it's very difficult now because we're in Corona, but it should be still the word. If you open up the Bible and if you allow the Bible to talk to you because it's the mind of God and it's the state of you and he's trying to work with you to get you to a state to come to him which is so gracious and so exciting. If you open your mind and allow him to draw you, you can be drawn. So here they go. And so they lower the man down into the room. They, they, they emphasize, it's like Jesus preaches. We're looking at it. Jesus preaches, withdraws the man. Jesus preaches, we look at your point. Jesus preaches, withdraws the man. So they draw him, they have the man, and they drop him down at the footsteps of our Savior. And so Jesus looks at him. Jesus looks at him. Jesus looks at him and he, he, he looks at him and he sits there and he says this. And he said, when Jesus saw, in the fifth verse, it says, when Jesus saw their faith, it wasn't, he knew their heart. Now the faith, like James said, Faith without works is dead. That man could have said, okay, I'll lay here and ask God to heal me. No, I'll just lay here. But see, but, but see, but see how it works. Look how the word works. If you truly want to be changed, if you truly want to be healed, look how it works. Look how it works. He's preaching the word. He's preaching the word. And by them receiving the word, the sight that they've seen individuals healed, they've seen lives change. So this man said, they said, let's get him to the foot, the foot, the feet of Jesus. Let's get him there. So they get him there. And Jesus sees their faith. He knows within the heart their faith. And he says unto the sick of palsy, son, calls him son. He didn't just say by his name, he called him son. He made an intimate relationship, extension to him. He said, by son, thy sins be forgiven thee. So his sins are forgiven because he knew within his heart that this man truly trusted in him. He knew in his heart, he knew in his heart that he knew that despite the the, 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 the the obstacles that was facing despite he couldn't walk, despite he had to have four people, four men getting there, despite when he got there, he couldn't get in, despite that he had to go to the world to get in, despite that he had to be lowered down in a crowd, out in a crowd, but at the feet of Jesus. Not in a separate room or in a separate side, but at the feet of Jesus. When you can come to the feet of Jesus, when you can come to the presence of Jesus, he can heal and change your life. You have to have some humility with that. You have to be humble, trusting in that. And this is what this man had in him. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Because the thing about it, it was that he was a sinner. And because he was a sinner, the sin played a part in reference to his physical illness. His, 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 it played a part in his, his spiritual, his, his heart, his, his, his mind wasn't set to accept it, Jesus based on his sinful nature. And sometimes we have to look at that now. Are we living in sin, which is causing us some illness within our body that we can't get healed? But we don't look at that. That can be an obstacle. 
Is it a situation where maybe we're not physically, but it's a situation where we have some heartache or some situations in our lives, and there must be some individuals that we need to get out of our lives because they're causing, this, they're causing us not to be healed. They're causing the physical illness because the physical illness can be somebody have you locked up or in prison based on their uh, behavior, based on how they do things and based on how they treat you, but you won't let them go. That could be an obstacle. Or have you tried to move yourself past the first obstacle? Because you got past the first one and you're saying, okay, and a second one came up and you're saying, okay, I'm getting tired. It's like when we're do, dealing with the situation now. There's several obstacles come up in your life probably. I know they have. Several obstacles come up. And are you still leaning and trusted on God to carry you on through? So he goes through this and he says here, but then, then, then here's the scribe sitting on the side. But these, but their work. So he pardons, he pardons. Jesus pardons the man's sin. He pardons the sin. He forgives him of the sin. Because he knew, because when we talk about healing and forgiveness, the only way that he could heal him, he had to go through heal first. He had to go through forgiveness first. Because he had to, he had to pardon him of the sins because of being a sinner. That's the way, only way that he can heal because we're going to get to why in a minute. And so he goes here and he says, but there was a certain of scribes sitting there and reason in their hearts. In their hearts. They're sitting there reasoning this in their hearts. Not the mind because the mind, the, the, what's in the heart moves into the mind and transforms the mind. You know what, what Paul says, I think it's in the 12 or 13, by the transforming of your mind and renewing of your heart that you be a new creature. So it has to be renewing of the mind that is motivated through the heart. I said it wrong, but through the heart, because the heart is the trigger of life. And so when he says the heart, is that they're looking at it that this man can't be who he is, Jesus is, because he's doing things that are contrary to the Bible. Because they said this, he blasphemed. He blasphemed the God by his actions, by his things that he's doing. And he says this, why do you these men that speak blaspheme? Who can forgive sin but God only? So he throws this out to him. Well, God's the only one who can forgive sin. He kind of, in a sense, you would think it might be a little bit sarcastic to a sin because they didn't understand. And Jesus was understanding that I am the son. He has sent me. I have tried to explain that to you by preaching and teaching, by testimony, by prophets, but you still haven't accepted. So he says this. And he says, immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, in the eighth verse, that thy reason within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your heart? It goes back to the heart again. See? Reason, reasoning in their heart, in the seventh verse, and then he goes back to this again in the eighth verse. Why reason in the heart? Because it was the heart that was causing this. It was the heart of evil men, the heart of uh, 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 crude. Um, scrutiny, scrutinizing Jesus, it was in the heart. Whether it, it be easier to say sin or palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up the bed and walk. So, so Jesus here is saying to them, he's saying, um, which one do you think would be better? Just forget a man of his sin and let it go? Or, or would it be better to heal him and then let it go? So Jesus is throwing the question out to him. And you have to ask yourself, what be the question? We do. Sometimes we look at, we just want the healing. <clears throat> and that's what Jesus is saying to us. Sometimes we just want the healing. Sometimes we want the comfort. But we, won't, we, we don't want to ask forgiveness of our sins. We don't want to uh, ask Jesus to confess. We don't want to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. See, we just want the healing and give me through the healing. We don't want the change of the spiritual mind. We don't want to change the spiritual relationship. We just want the healing. And that's the nature of us, the sinful nature of us. All we want is what we want to make ourselves comfortable. We don't want to have to change anything in our lives. Just heal us. And that's it. But he says here within this, he says, for this man to be healed, for this man to be healed, for Jesus to heal, as we go here, Jesus to heal, as for this man to be healed, Forgiveness had to be taking place. Oh, great God. Forgiveness. A sinner, he had to be forgiven. 
He had the man. What did he make? The man. We would say. We would say internally, not openly, but internally, the man asked for forgiveness because Jesus wouldn't have done it just to do it. So the man confessed that he was a sinner. He confessed that he was a sinner. And Jesus saw that he needed that, that needed to be done, and Jesus did that to do that. Because if he just healed and walked away, the man would still have been a sinner. Eternal life would have been no good. And Jesus came to give eternal life. So he would have contradict his own teaching and reference, okay, I just healed and moved on. Because remember, when he did heal, they did it for a purpose. And that was a purpose that he did here. But he says here in the 10th verse, but thou you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sin. He let them know right there who he is. He points out that he is the Son of God who gave him the power to forgive sin. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way unto thy house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. And as much as they were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw this before. So yeah, we never saw this before. So we see this is because we have to look at this <clears throat> is that for this to get to here, we have to understand repentance and faith did this. Repentance and faith. The man repented. Now he might not did it openly. He might have done it at the feet of God and it doesn't record, Mark doesn't record. But to get to, to get to here, this had to take place. So the message I want to let you know is that this has to take place. Repentance. Repentance and faith are the fruit of are fruits of worthy repentance. His exhortation to honest and generosity. If we look at this, because if we look at this, here's an example. Look at, go to Luke, the third chapter. And we'll go through this real quick. Because this is important, because if we're trying to get through situations, we need to understand it. So we're going to Luke, the third chapter. <clears throat> That's Luke, the book of Luke, the third chapter. And we look at verses 10 and 14. Then the angel said it to them. Uh, I said Luke 3rd, 3rd, 10 and 14. Excuse me, I was in second. 10 and 14. Luke 3, third chapter. Verse 10 through 14. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tongues, let him give it to him who has none. And who has had food, let him do likewise. Then the tax collector, tax collector also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Collect no more than what is appointed to you. Likewise, a soldier asked him, saying, What shall we do? He then said to them, Do not intimidate anyone, accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. And what this is is repentance. And they were talking about these are the fruits. We talk about fruits of repentance. Because what they were doing that Jesus was saying here, he was teaching them as they came, because you saw who they were. They were sinners. And he said, For true repentance, the fruit of repentance is not to ask more then what needs to be asked of? And give what you're able to give. And give that. Generosity and honesty is the fruits of repentance. And so that's what Jesus was saying. So Jesus was showing you of this is that man cannot be forgiven if he will not forgive. So we have to remember that. Man cannot be forgiven unless he forgives. And that was something that really stuck in me when I said it, that I was looking to study and I'm going, until we, that's why he said, love your neighbor. Until we can forgive, we cannot be forgiven. Because it's a, it, it's a one way street, it's not a two way street. It's not us asking God to forgive us, but we can't forgive another individual. We can't forgive somebody else to do it. How can you ask God to forgive me, but you can't forgive what somebody else done to you? Yes, you might remember it. Yes, it might stay within your mind. It might stay on your heart, 
But the thing about it that if Jesus can forgive, if God can forgive, can forgive us, then we should be able to forgive somebody else. And I want you to do this exercise before I close, is that get a hold of somebody and pray with this person till next week. And, and pray about something that can be changed in our community or even in our world or something. And you two pray on that for a week. And let's see what the results will be in reference to that. Let's see how God will work to maybe heal or change certain things and so that things could be done and that it could be acceptable in his sight. And so I thank you. Uh, we will be, and for you that don't have the books, I apologize, I don't let you know, but we'll be in John, St. John, the 17th chapter, and verses 14 to 24, but read the whole chapter. That chapter is going to blow your mind in reference to Jesus praying. It's going to blow your mind. I'm not going to tell you no more, but it'll blow your mind. Sit down, meditate, pray to God, and read that scripture. Oh, gracious God, we thank you again. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for your word. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that today you allow us to understand the trueness of repentance, the trueness of healing and forgiveness. And we pray, Lord, that we can forgive, we can take, we can forgive individuals like you forgave us, that you continue to forgive us because we continue to fall short of your grace, but you forgive us. So let our hearts be open to receive you and to be forgive, to forgive individuals in sincerity and in truth. We pray, Lord, that you comfort us and keep us. Pray that our word, that your word will continue to lay on our souls and our hearts as we travel along this journey of our life and we be led by you. In your son's name we pray, amen.